All right, so welcome back to another part in my series on getting great tones out of the Helix. This time I have something kind of interesting that I just discovered uh, pretty much just a few days ago, actually. I did a video last week, the last one in this series, uh, which was uh, talking about using split and merge blocks um, within our patches and some of the possibilities of, of doing so. Um, if you remember, anybody who, who watched that video, um, when we talked about it, we said there was different options for the split blocks. It was split Y, split AB, and split crossover. Well, I got to thinking after doing that video about the use of the split crossover and some of the functions we could uh, possibly come up with with that. If you remember in that video, I used it with an octaver to kind of get it so that when I was playing in the upper register, it wasn't triggering the octaver, but as I moved into the lower register notes, it would trigger the octaver and it would kind of uh, slowly blend the, the uh, octave down note in. It was just a, a, a bit of a creative idea I had that whether it's of any use to anybody or not is irrelevant. It was just uh, more to show what some of the possibilities are. But I got to thinking after, how could we use that for something maybe more practical? And I started to kind of lean in the direction of how we could use it with our cab blocks to possibly give us more ability to shape our sound, uh, maybe even only having to use one cab instead of a dual cab. One of the things with the Helix that I've heard a complaint about, and it's not, I shouldn't even call it a complaint, it's, it's something I've said as well, is we'd love to have the ability to be able to move our virtual microphone around in more of a three-dimensional space, maybe on axis, off axis, rather than just forward and back. Uh, the forward and back is great, and I've discussed that in my previous cab videos of how much of a difference, for instance, it could make with, let's say, a ribbon mic by using something like the 4038 mic model and pulling the microphone back you know, 12 virtual inches within the Helix makes all the difference to that microphone. But it still didn't give us the ability to move it on axis or off axis, which anybody who has recorded real guitar amps uh, in real life knows that moving a microphone even a few inches either way on a speaker can have huge sonic implications uh, and really comes up with different EQ curves for us uh, that might be you know, more what we're looking for at that given time. So I can't, I've come up with a way using the split crossover block that I think almost kind of mimics the ability to move this microphone around in a bit more of a three-dimensional vir uh, virtual space rather than just this forward back thing. Now, some people might disagree with me on this, but I, I, that's maybe not even the best way to explain it. But you'll see what I mean when I get into this. So one thing we have to do then is we have to understand again what the split crossover block is going to be. That's, that is going to be very important. This split block that I'm going to use um, has to be a split crossover. The split wire, the split AB is not going to do what we need for this. So it's going to be strictly the split crossover. So again, if we look over here, I have the split crossover block highlighted. And what it does, we can set a frequency. And that's going to allow then only whatever frequency I've set and above to go through this top path, okay, or path A, let's call it. And it's going to send any frequencies below one kilohertz down to the second path, all right? Um, now you might say, okay, well, I, again, I don't really know what I could use this for, but this is what I've come up with. If you've noticed, here is a patch I've set up with the Brit Trem Bright. Uh, this is uh, just a patch I think I used for a couple um, guitar solo cover videos and I like the sound of it, so I figured I would use it for this demo. I'm sending that into just a single 412 Greenback 25. And in this example, I've mic'd it with a 160 ribbon. And if you notice on, on this particular snapshot, uh, I've set it up with it six and a half inches back like I would with the ribbon mics oftentimes. But here's what gets interesting now. I've set it so that the split crossover is going to send everything above a thousand hertz up through this simple gain block, okay? Which is gonna allow me to control the volume of whatever is passing through path A here. And I've put another gain block down below, which is gonna allow me to adjust the volume of whatever frequencies are being sent down here, right? So again, let's think this through. We have all our frequencies from this cabin mic and amp feeding through 
this gain block, which is going to control only everything above a thousand hertz. So I could really go in and use this gain block as a volume control to control all the frequencies of that particular mic model from a thousand hertz and up. I could control the volume of that without affecting the frequencies below it and vice versa. I can then control the frequencies below a thousand hertz by using this gain block. And then that'll simply merge back up here. I haven't touched the merge settings. I, I, I could, but I'm, it's just gonna overcomplicate things. And then I just set that into a, a standard low and high cut, which is what I would set on just about any mic, right? 100 hertz uh, low cuts, uh, 10,500 hertz or 10.5 kilohertz on the high cut. So I'll just leave that. And I've done that to keep it consistent for everything. So um, it's a fair comparison. So I've set up a bunch of snapshots like I have in a lot of videos. And what you'll notice is the first one is simply just the 160 uh, ribbon mic. It's going into both of these gain blocks equally. So basically, and then into this EQ here, down through another path over here. You'll notice I have another set of cabs here that's bypassed in all these snapshots, except for one that I'll, I'll get into later. Um, so what you're basically hearing with snapshot one is the 160 ribbon mic simply pulled back 6.5 inches, which is similar to what I would use it as. Uh, normally. Now the problem with that is if we listen to that sound There's nothing wrong with that tone, but it, it doesn't have a lot of bite to it. The ribbon mics are rather warm sounding, right? Um, and that's what's what's nice about them. Now we could just go in and, and dump a bunch of EQ on that, boost some high mids, get some more cut in it, right? But then sometimes by doing that, if we boost too much to where we want it, we lose a bit of that warmth and uh, character of that mic. So, you know, we gotta be careful with EQ not to go too heavy handed on it. Well, another option is, like I have set down here where I've called this snapshot dual cab. I've set up a dual cab uh, with the same settings, um, or similar settings anyways on the 160 ribbon. Actually, I think that I'll keep that the same, so 6.5. And then in combination with a 421 dynamic mic. So that's another option people have, have used before where they say, okay, the ribbon mic's giving me something, it's nice and warm, uh, but I'm gonna add the dynamic mic in to add that bite in, right? And then with this, I'm using the route AB and I'm routing more signal to the dynamic. Uh, and just blending in the um, warmth of the ribbon mic uh, as, as I felt needed for this. Okay, so that's a common scenario. You know, and you can blend that a little less, whatever you want, as I've talked about in my other cab videos, right? So if I compare that to just the ribbon bike by itself, gives me a little bit more bite. Um, where I had it before here, let's do that comparison again. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of ribbon mics, as most people know that, that have watched any of my videos in the past. Anytime I mix that dynamic mic in, there's always something in the upper upper frequencies, the high mids that, that I just, I'm not crazy about. It has that, that almost harshness that a lot of people complain about, especially when you get the stage volume and crank it up, right? So it's, it's a bit of messing around to get a good balance between the two. And the other downside too is now we're using up another cab block, which is, is DSP that usage that we may you know, want to use for something else. That's, you know, I mean, we would do it if we have to, but it would be nice if we could find a way to not have to do that. So here's what I've done. If we go back to our ribbon mic, I set up a bunch of other snapshots. I set one saying cross one kilohertz, cross 800 hertz, cross 600 hertz, cross 400 hertz, cross two kilohertz, cross four kilohertz, and so on. Now you might say, well, what are those all about? Well, this is what's happening now. If I go to my normal 160 um, uh, ribbon snapshot I just told you about, I have the ribbon mic set at six and a half, and that's how I've dialed back some of the muddiness, right? Again, let's just go back to this and listen. If I play with it back six and a half inches,
okay? It's not a bad tone. If I was just to go one inch with that. Obviously that needs some work. There's a lot more bottom end and low mids that are gonna maybe be too muddy to let it cut. So that's why we move up to six and a half inches here. Nothing wrong with that tone, it's really nice, but we might want a little bit more bite and cut like we would when we added the dynamic mic in. But using this new system, we don't have to do that anymore. And we don't have to use EQ. We can just find a really interesting way of blending certain frequencies that we choose with the crossover. So like I said, when I choose cross one kilohertz patch here or snapshot, what's happening is on my cab, I've moved the 160 ribbon back to one inch off because I'm not gonna use that to control the bottom end anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send all the frequencies above 1000 hertz up to this gain block and all the frequencies below 1000 hertz to this gain block. So if you notice now, what I've done is I've boosted by five decibels all the frequencies of the 160 ribbon mic up by five dB above one kilohertz. I've taken all the frequencies below one kilohertz and dropped them two dB. So what I've done is I've taken the, the basic profile, frequency profile of the 160 ribbon mic, which we may really like. We could do this with any mic, the 121, the 4038, or even dynamic mics for that matter. I'll, use, I'll give you an example after. And we can now pick a crossover point and be able to fine tune the volume of the frequency curve, the natural frequency curves of that mic above that crossover point and the ones below that. So let's take something like the, the, the 160 ribbon. I say, well, the 160 ribbon is a nice sounding mic, but when it's one inch on the speaker cone or on the speaker itself, um, it, it's too muddy, it's too much bottom, right? So I simply said, okay, well, what if I go in and say, I'm gonna dial those low frequencies under one kilohertz down kilohertz down two dB. And then I'm gonna go above one kilohertz, I'm gonna bump those way up to get that edge in there, but maybe without getting that bitiness of the dynamic mic that we don't want, if that makes any sense, right? So I've, I've cut the frequencies, all the, the, the natural frequency curve of that mic under one kilohertz, I've now given myself the ability to move it down a couple dB, and I've taken everything above that one kilohertz natural frequency curve of that mic and I've bumped it up five dB. So let's listen to that. I'm gonna play the 160 ribbon first, just six and a half inches off, okay? And just flat, this is how it sounds without playing with that crossover point at all. Now I'll go to that crossover point at a thousand kilohertz with the boost and cut I told you about. We can hear there's a lot more bite to it. Let me play and go back and forth. Again, watch up here on the snapshots. You'll see which one I'm playing at each given moment. So here's the 160. So a lot more bite, a lot more snap. Now you might say, well, it thinned out too much. Well, it's an easy fix then. I can just come back here and say, okay, I'll pull this back to three and a half dB of boost above one kilohertz. So we can now use these controls to shape our sound more. You might say, well, I want a little more bottom end in it. Okay, I'll come down to the one controlling my lower frequencies and I'll boost this up by a dB. Or maybe we don't want to lose any of that bottom and we just want the, the, the higher frequencies to be boosted. We take that and compare it to just the 160 uh, without any of this processing, just with the mic six and a half inches back. Go back to the one kilohertz. We've added bite into it without doing anything with another mic or another EQ, just within the cab because we've given ourselves control over these different frequencies now.
I find this a fascinating and wonderful way that I am likely going to use for almost all my patches now because it just gives me that ability to not have to go futz about with EQs and another mic and two cabs and it's just a really simple thing and once you set up a template like this it's very simple. Now you might say okay well other than adjusting just the volume on the gain blocks we can also play around with our crossover point. Okay, so let me just go back and set this where, where we had it, because I think I had them all matched up. Uh, plus five and minus two, okay. Well, I've done patches now where I set the crossover point at one kilohertz, 800 hertz, 600 hertz, 400 hertz, two kilohertz, and four kilohertz. Okay, so let's take a listen to how that changes as we play with that crossover point. And this is why I was saying it's almost like moving the mic around in, in a virtual three-dimensional space now where before we could just move it forward and backward. This is almost giving us that ability to, to customize the EQ curve much in the way that moving a microphone around would be. I, somebody might disagree with me on that. I, I'm just trying to find an analogy that sort of fits with, with what this is like uh, accomplishing in a sense, right? So... Anyways, it's a pretty interesting thing. So here it is again with the one kilohertz crossover point. Now I'm gonna play and I'm gonna switch through these um, to 800, 600, 400. Just listen to the tonal change. I'm just gonna play some simple chords and we'll switch through, okay? Take a listen and again, watch up here for when the snapshot changes and you'll be able to see which one I'm on and where the crossover point is, okay? Quite dramatic by changing that crossover point. So if, just to recap now, what we have the ability to do is change the crossover point of which frequencies are gonna be sent across path A and which frequencies are gonna be sent across path B. And then we're gonna be able to adjust whatever frequencies we've set by using gain blocks. So by using the crossover point and then the gain blocks, we have absolute amazing control over the sound of that particular cab and mic combination we're using. Much like I said, as a, a simple way of, of imagining it, almost like the ability to move a microphone around in a three-dimensional space like we would in the real world. And I guess, again, like I said, I may get some comments saying that's not the same thing, you know, and I don't think it is either, but it kind of moves us closer to that. And I just find it really interesting. And I was really impressed with the short amount of time I've had to play with this, how many sound uh, sounds I was able to dial in and problems within a certain say cab and mic combination I was able to solve very easily without having to get an EQ out and figure out which frequencies I need to boost or cut and then maybe oh, that's a little too much now it's a little too harsh right now you might ask well how is this going to compare to just if I uh, combined the dual cabs with a dynamic mic and a ribbon mic well, let's try that. I set this up. Now, again, I, I've set my, my high, low pass EQ, uh, generally, I think the same. Okay, I'll set that to 100 so they're equal. Um, I have the 160 ribbon back six and a half, just like I have it up there, but I've added a 421 dynamic in and just uh, a little bit heavier towards the dynamic to get that bite in there. Again, this is hard thing to compare because there's so many settings we could do in both. But let's just take a listen to how that goes. And I'll, I'll compare it from the dual cab. I'll go from the, the 160 by itself to the dual cab. And then I'll go maybe to the one or 800 hertz crossover just to kind of hear the difference between those. Okay, so here's the 160 ribbon. <laughs>
So that switch was to the dual cab. You heard how we got a little bit of bite in there. Now to me though, when I hear that, I hear that bit of harshness in the high end that the dynamic breaks in, Mike brings into the picture. And to me, I'm hearing something there that's going to maybe be problematic if that volume is cranked up at stage volume. Or in a mix, I'm gonna be trying to dial that out. Now let's listen to that in comparison to the 800 Hertz crossover point in the other way of doing things with the crossover split. Sorry. And I'll go back and forth to the dual cab and that. I could even go down to the 600 hertz crossover point. Gives it a slight warmer sound. Do you hear that when I go back to the dual cab? There's a little bite to it. 600. A little warmer. And we gotta remember, that has nothing other than just the one cab with the 160 ribbon, and it's all being controlled by the split block at the cr whatever fr uh, crossover frequency we choose, and then changing around the volume here. And, th and the thing is, again, I could, you could say, well, there's still a little too much bite on the 600 hertz crossover. That's easily rectified by coming in here, and instead of boosting at 5 dB, let's try it at 4 dB. Might say that's a little too much, let's go 3 dB. And uh, maybe boost the lows up another half dB or dB. I'd say that's, you know, oh, I took too many of the highs out, boost it back up a bit. The beauty of this is it's so flexible now. We have, we've basically created more parameters to use with, uh, within our internal stock cabs and microphones than what was given to us by line six, not just having a low cut or a high cut. Now we can go in and we can decide where that crossover point's gonna be and, and how we can, uh, can tweak these parameters to get something that work, we like the sound of and that works in our situation. So very interesting stuff. Now I also did, one where I said, okay, let's try this, but let's get rid of the ribbon mic and let's just go with the dynamic mic. So, you know, again, it's not a secret that I'm not a huge fan of dynamic mics. And again, this is just my personal opinion. It's totally meaningless. There's been a million wonderful records made and uh, so many classic guitar tones recorded with nothing but a Shure SM57, right? So, but for, for my own personal taste, I like to have it a little bit more warm. So this gives us a way to maybe take a dynamic mic, do the similar, idea here. So put a crossover point at say one kilohertz, right? And then dial back the higher frequencies and maybe either keep the low frequencies the same or boost them up. Okay, so here's a patch now. Here's the 421 dynamic just by itself with no nothing uh, being messed around with here. Just one inch off you'll notice the gain blocks are both at zero, so we're just gonna get the 421 dynamic. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. The 421 is one of my favorite dynamics if I have to use one. But again, what we can do now is we can maybe pick a crossover point of one kilohertz and just bump down by three dB, everything above one kilohertz, just to kind of soften the harshness and give the lows a little bit of a boost. So this, that's what this will sound like. Here's the, here's the 421 by itself, and then I'll switch to the one kilohertz crossover. Now you notice it got remarkably darker. Um, now you might say, well, that, that's too dark. So this doesn't work for that. Well, no, all we have to do is play with our crossover point. So what if I bring that crossover point from one kilohertz to two kilohertz? Now 
let's compare that with the original 421. So here's the 421 with no processing. A little bit thin sounding. Now I'll play that and, and watch the snapshots and we'll, we'll switch to the two kilohertz crossover. Fine, you might say, well, it's still a little bit too dark. Okay, well, let's do it with a four kilohertz crossover. So here's the original uh, 421 dynamic. Now I'll switch to the, uh, I'll play a little bit of that and I'll switch to the four kilohertz crossover. just warms it up a little bit and takes that that edge off which might just be the ticket when we get on stage and we crank that volume up and you find those those highs are a little harsh this might just be the ticket to taming them a little bit takes away that dynamic quality to it and almost puts it more leaning towards the ribbon side of things. So very nice there. Um, Tons of possibilities with this. So again, I, I hope that's kind of clear for everybody. It's, it can be a little bit confusing at first until you get your head around it. So basically what we've done is we've taken a uh, whatever amp and, and single cab we want. We've placed a split block after it's set to a crossover. We've decided on a particular crossover point. And again, just to recap, whatever we set this at, if we set it at one kilohertz, like it's set here, that's gonna feed all the frequencies from one kilohertz and above through our path A, and it's gonna send everything below one kilohertz down through path B. We've then added two simple gain blocks after that split and before the merge. And that allows us to then control independently the EQ curve, the built-in EQ curve of that particular mic set at the crossover point. So this gain block can raise or lower the volume of all the frequency, all of the frequency curve of that mic, up or down, anything above a, a one kilohertz. And this one is going to allow us to adjust the EQ curve of that mic below one kilohertz. So we can set that crossover point wherever we want. And we can also then adjust the gain of the frequencies above or below that crossover point. Uh, after that, everything else is kind of irrelevant. I mean, I, I just put a simple low and high cut like I would with most patches, right? After that, and then my delays, reverbs, and whatever else. I have an EQ here that's not even turned on. Uh, my little compressor at the end that I oftentimes use, so. I'm gonna put these up on uh, Custom Tone for anybody who wants to download them and play around with them. I think this is a really fascinating thing and I'm kind of disappointed I didn't think of it earlier. It's funny, I, when I was doing my split and merge video, uh, I, you know, I was talking, started thinking more about this crossover split, which is one that I looked at before and I went, yeah, probably nothing I, I would need. Um, and that was my first mistake is, is thinking that. So, uh, but then the more I got thinking about it after that last video, I realized that this has some very interesting possibilities here. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. And I hope it's something that can help. Uh, some people might find that it's just not going to work for them and they'd prefer to slap an EQ on or use the dual cabs or whatever, but it is just a Another option that I haven't seen used anywhere yet, and I thought I would share it with you guys, and hopefully, uh, you know, it's going to help out uh, to, to getting our end goal closer to what we want to hear, you know, compared to what we're hearing in our head, let's say. So uh, if you guys have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you don't mind, like uh, the video, share it, subscribe if, uh, if you're so inclined. I really appreciate all the support and the kind words I get for all the videos. And uh, we'll be back again soon enough with uh, another topic on uh, our lovely Helix. So anyways, hope you guys are uh, doing well and we'll talk soon.